Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Rocky Bay. It is a 10 by 14, and I completed this uh, yesterday, but <clears throat> what you see us painting right now is from back in November, actually, mid-November of last year. And uh, we'll talk about what the holdup is in a minute. Um, <clears throat> what the holdup was, I mean. Uh, currently, though, we are uh, painting on a bit of hardboard. It's been primed with two coats of transparent gesso. And the underpainting color here, it, it looks very much like burnt umber. Um, so uh, I had this scene in mind. This is from a photo I took a while back. And... I uh, I went ahead, I did the underpainting, um, as you see me doing now. <clears throat> and I let that dry a little while, and then I went in, I did the sky and the water. And then I just decided I didn't really have the mental whatever to get into the rocks. I was hitting a bit of a block there. Um, and so, uh, recently, if you've been looking at the sort of stuff I've been doing on the channel, I've been painting a lot of rocks, so... <clears throat> and this little reference image uh, that I've been painting from, which, by the way, you have access to that in the members area, along with the real-time video. In this case, it's nearly four hours long. Um, but it's all good stuff. It's all real-time, so if that's what you got a hankering for, um, go for it. Um, anyway, I've been going after a lot of rocks lately, so I thought, well, you know, I've got the, uh, I've got the fortitude. I can do it. I'm going to do it. And I did. And it came out fine. The, the key, I'll just tell you right now, I'm not going to play games with you. The key, the painting rocks is tough. Painting, um, uh, almost anything to painting, uh, is tough. Um, and what I would always tell a student is, you know, uh, I'm not telling you that, like, um, there's things I can or can't paint. Um, I get that a lot from students where they say, oh, I can't paint water, or I can't paint trees, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. And my answer to them is always the same. It's just shapes. And that would be true of rocks. They say, well, you're, bit, you're contradicting yourself, Mike, because uh, you just said it's all just shapes, and yet you tell me you have trouble painting rocks. Well, um, yeah, it is just shapes. But in this case, if you saw the reference image, it was thousands of tiny rocks, small rocks, you know, not tiny, but small, um, and, uh, I knew, uh, what you have to do in a case like that is you have to kind of look at the reference, but you really need to come up with a framework, an imaginative framework that will, um, steer you through the process, and, um, that's what I've been doing, and, um, you know, I've taken on rocks, and I've been doing good rocks for quite a while now. However, this was just OTT, just so many small rocks that I didn't want to deal with it until until yesterday when I found the strength. And, uh, you know, yesterday was Monday. I take Sunday off. I had a good night's sleep. And I was rest, rested and refreshed, and I thought, yeah, it's time. It's time to finish this painting, and I'm very pleased with the way the painting turned out. Um yeah it's it's a really cool scene i think uh, and uh, obviously the sun is coming in at a oblique angle you know and um i think it looks real good uh you know um learning how to simplify th things in the landscape is really really important and in my case i mean i've probably said this before in the channel but you would hear me talking about it again in the members area version uh, as I was doing the painting. Uh, when you're dealing with extremely complex um, uh, items in the reference and you're you're trying to execute it in your painting, in my case, you can see I wear glasses. Uh, what I will do is I'll take the glasses off. And I do quite a, more than half my painting probably of every painting with the glasses off. Um, but it's especially critical um, here where you just want to see patterns. You don't want to see details. Now, I'd, I've been nearsighted. I've been wearing glasses since sixth grade, you know. 
and uh, you know, uh, for a lot of my life, I thought, well, that's a bit of a curse having to wear glasses. But if you are a painter, you are lucky. It is a blessing. Uh, blessing. Um, now, if you have perfect vision, you might say, well, that's great for you, Mike. What about what about us? You know. Um, and uh, what you can do is you can squint, and when you squint, it gives you kind of a similar quality. Um, other strategies are uh, you can fall back on other um, strategies like uh, you can have a mirror across from your painting area and look in the mirror. You'd be surprised how many things you can catch doing that. In my case, since I video uh, everything and my painting, my studio, my painting area is quite small. Um, what I'll do is I look in the video camera and I can see the image reversed and smaller. And um, it's almost like I was able to get back a few, uh, a few feet from it. Um, that would be great, though, if I did have a studio where I had that ability. But, you know, I'm very, very thankful for the studio I do have and the ability uh, that I have to create paintings. And, you know, we all got uh, we all get challenges. And that's the other thing. Uh, it's a matter of fortitude. Will you give up? Will you give in? Okay, it looks like we're pretty much where the painting was uh just sat like this for a long time yes it did and this is yesterday everything forward you're seeing um was the big finish and i mixed a color that wasn't completely black it was actually perylene uh black which is very much of a dark green alizarin crimson and a little taste of black and a good chunk of burn number in there because i wanted a little bit of oh hey add for the book it's coming here it is we're in it go ahead buy the book you want to paint like this you're interested in what I do it's all in there um pretty much every secrets in there um, if it's not in there um, it's because I just figured it out since I wrote the book so go check it out 60 bucks uh, international shipping included which is pretty expensive let me tell you but I have stock I have good inventory now we had a situation where you maybe went to go order and saw that it was sold out that's been remedied my friend so it'll be signed and numbered as well by me yours truly m francis mccarthy you can call me mike for short yeah so anyway um yeah for the landforms uh, after the sky and in some cases a lot of times i don't do the water i do the sky uh and then i'll get in the land and then i would do the water in a case like this but um, here since the water was done not done mostly done um, First thing I like to do is build out uh, in the landforms from the shadows out to uh, The lightest parts of the landscape and here I varied that a little bit, but um, I do like to get the shadows in there early and the reason for that is that you want to build over the top of the shadows It's not very good to try and plonk um, dark paint over um, well you, you can do it but it tends to sit on top and that isn't the effect shadows are underneath other things so it's best to paint those in first get those shadows in first and spread it out a little bit don't be too tight don't spread it out too much either like like so many things with painting um, you know there's a fine line oh it sounds like you've got a plane overhead yeah, not that common of an occurrence here where I live, but uh, there we go. Yeah, so there were some things with this reference where it's actually like dead grass going up onto the rocks. It meets the rocks. They basically become very similar in tone. And then in the shadow areas, um, say down a little bit from the cliff. It's not quite a cliff, but you know what I'm saying. It's a little raised area. Um, it, it, the grays go cooler, so I tried to play that up, and um, you can see there's like a little beach area, which I, in the reference, is rocks, and I decided to pretty much keep it as rocks, but they're very cool and a bit lighter. Um, it might have been, um, well, I don't know, if, because see that color I'm painting now, that tan, it's kind of one of the reasons I didn't want to just make that a little sandy area. I thought maybe that would be conflict, and uh, yeah, this is definitely one of those kind of paintings too, where I'm painting along, and yeah, I've got a certain degree of mastery. I've been doing this a while, but I'm kind of thinking, hmm, I really don't know what I'm doing. 
<laughs> and that's good. That's a good thing. It's a good place to be, you know. Not every day, but it's good once in a while to be in this like, I don't really know how to handle this. And you just keep paint, paint your way through it, you know. Now, the last video on the channel, I did a lot of uh, talking about getting yourself out of a slump, um, you know. Hopefully, the best thing with the slumps and stuff is just to avoid being in a slump. Have a regular practice, you know. Uh, and now I'm uh, not as lazy as some, but I'm lazier than others. And uh, I think laziness is a problem in the modern world. And uh, mostly because unlike, say, our ancestors, which basically had some leisure time, we have an excess of leisure time. Um, and, and trust me, I'm, I'm glad for it. I'd rather not have to uh, get up and milk the cows at three in the morning and then you fall into bed at, late at night after, uh, you know, exhausted from trying to raise enough food just to feed myself and my family. And we're not that far from that as humans. It's easy to forget that. Um, instead, we've gone pretty far the other way where we have an excess of leisure time and an excess of entertaining things to look at. We've gone from where maybe you had a storyteller around the fire for most of human history uh, to um, newspapers, books, um, and not that long after those became very popular. Uh, we had radio and then we had television and then we had the all-consuming uh, media which is the internet and you could spend games, right? You could spend every waking hour that you're not working or eating or sleep. Well, that would be said, did say waking hour. But you could do that just entertaining yourself, being engaged with content that other people have created. You know, I've had people justify the gaming to me like, well, da 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 da. Like, they feel it's creative. I don't necessarily feel, yes, you're exercising some problem solving ability, and that is fun. But what do you have to show for it? See, the awesome thing about painting is that it's mentally very challenging. Um, but you get to see a result. You get to, you have something to show for, I did spend quite a lot of time painting these ways, I'll tell you that. You have something to show for your time. And um, if you're working at it dil diligently um, uh, with, with a regular sort of practice, um, you can just keep going, you know, just keep getting better. And uh, I do recommend, uh, especially if you're someone starting out, you're going to do a lot of paintings. First of all, watch out for those cheap canvases, you know, it's a false economy because your work always has a kind of mm, samey sort of canvas weave feel to it. I think it's better to work on a smooth board personally. Um, if you do like to work on a textured surface, there's videos on the channel. It's also a whole uh, ch uh, chapter in my book on a pretty cool little texturizing process. Yeah, and it can be awesome to work on a texture, but be careful what texture that is. Um, also, uh, the cheap paints, avoid those because you'll be working harder to get sort of... You're already going to have to work hard since you're not an experienced painter. Um, you'll have to work twice as hard with those student grade pigments because they're going to be kind of weak and they'll let you down quite often. So maybe when you very first start out, buy yourself one of those sets of, uh, you know, 8 to 12 colors. The best sets are 5 colors, by the way. Just the, uh, the yellow, red, and blue with the white and black and maybe um, phthalo green or something. Just start with that. Um, but uh, when you get ready to buy your new tubes of paint, uh, go with the pro grade. You won't be sorry. Because the reason that the student p the student paints are cheaper is because there's less paint in them. There's less pigment. They bulk it out with um, marble dust and, and other um, additives that uh, basically just make it weaker. So as you're trying to paint, as you're trying to get a result, you see something in the reference and you're trying to get it down. Uh, you're going to be struggling. It's going to be harder. Okay, so we're, this is real time here. You're seeing the tail end. I like to do that. 
And I am uh, pretty happy with this painting. I'd love to know what you think of it. And um, also, if you got anything from this video, hey, leave me a comment. Or if you have some financial wherewithal, uh, leave me a tip. Uh, or go buy a painting from my sh uh, site. Until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And God bless you and your family.